Have you ever seen one of these in the craft store next to the beads and beading supplies and wondered, what on earth is it and why do I need it? This is a thread burner and in today's video I'm going to show you just how useful it is and also share six things you should never do with it. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So before we get into the six things you shouldn't do with a thread burner, Here's a quick overview of what this tool does and how it works. This is mine. It's the Thread Zap 2 by Beadsmith. There are lots of different brands and all of the ones that I have seen are battery operated. This one takes a AA battery. So if it stops working or if it's not getting hot quickly enough for you, try replacing the battery or just put in a better quality battery. This is the business end. This is the part that gets very hot. You don't want to touch this. Some of the brands that this tip will actually glow red. This one doesn't. This tip gets very hot. Okay, maybe not as hot as the sun, but the instant you press the button, it gets hot. I read somewhere around seven to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is awesome. So it's going to melt any synthetic thread you have. Here I have some wildfire, pretty much the same thing as Fireline. And I'll just press it, and that is melted. Now you can see the way I did that, it just kind of melted a little ball onto it. The best way is to hold it a little taut, which is what you'd be doing in your beading project and you just press it and it just melts it instantly. It's so quick. And it gives a much closer, cleaner cut than you would get with scissors because you can get this tip in where you can't get scissors. Here's a bracelet I made some time ago and I didn't know what I was doing. I made this so long ago. But some of these threads have popped. And like this one right here, you can't really get much closer than that with a pair of scissors. But I'll show you this one. What you can do is sort of bend it back. Oh, I can, f yeah, there's the knot I made, and obviously that didn't hold. You can sort of bend it back, and now I'll press the button and go in there. And now that is secured. So it's a great way of getting into tight spaces in your beadwork. You can get in very close, very neat, and very quick. Also, because it melts it, those ends aren't going to fray. And if, uh, for some reason, you damage this, because this is a very fine wire, and it can be damaged or just simply stop working, this whole thing pulls out. You can buy replacement tips for some of the brands, I think maybe most of the brands. The most common comment that I've seen when I was researching this is, why didn't I get one sooner? It does seem like kind of an unnecessary device, but it just makes your beadwork go so much more pleasantly. Now I have seen a few different ways of using it. I'm not quite sure what the benefit is of doing it this way, but I've seen folks actually pass their thread into that loop and then press the button and it melts. Now I know you probably can't see it on camera, but I can feel it. Maybe you can hear it if I run my fingernail. It's like a little melted blob at the end, which will make threading your needle next difficult. But I found I just run my fingernail over it, it flattens the thread and pulls off that little blob and then you can thread your needle. So you can do it that way. I, again, I'm not quite sure if you know the benefit of doing it like this, of putting it in there rather than just pressing it on. I'd be interested in knowing. I've also seen folks actually leave a little bit of thread sticking up from a project and then press this down and what happens is you get a little bit of a ball there which I suppose in some cases might be desirable it's certainly not going to pull through but it also could be kind of unsightly so it depends on what you're doing I've seen folks use it to seal the edges of ribbon but I don't really think it's that attractive but you can try it if you have synthetic ribbon now let's go on to six things you should never do with a thread burner number one is to leave it on the thread too long as you can see all you need press the button push done you just need a quick touch you don't want to leave it on too long unless you're intending to and you're being very careful. If you were doing something like a piece of jewelry, which is what 
this is made for is to take care of those thread ends. If you leave it on too long, you risk melting threads that you want to keep and destroying your whole piece. And also, unless you're doing it deliberately and planned, you're going to get an unsightly lump of melted thread. And if you want to do thicker cord, like paracord, like I melted this end with this, use a lighter instead. I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm sorry. I did this for you last night in testing. I used this to melt this whole end of the paracord. It looked like this and now it looks like this. And my tip was coated in melted black goo. I had to spend a fair amount of time. Ever, I pulled this out and then laid this on something and ever so carefully had to scrape all that black goo off. So I've made the mistake so you don't have to. You're welcome. Don't do it. <laughs> if you're going to be doing something larger, find a different tool. There are other tools that will will work for that. The second thing you should never do with a thread burner is put it down without the safety cap on. Did I mention this gets hot? Really hot? It does heat up quickly and it cools off pretty quickly too, but why risk yourself or a loved one or a pet getting burned? Just always pop on that safety cap. It's designed to protect that delicate thin wire tip from getting bumped and it also will prevent you from burning things you don't work, want to, like yourself or your work surface. Some of these do have a retractable tip. This doesn't, but those are pretty cool because when you press the button, it comes out and gets hot. And then when you let go, it goes in and cools off. And so this is not necessary. Many thanks to those of you who have decided to support me on Patreon. It makes a big difference and is a huge factor in whether or not this channel stays on YouTube. If you're a regular here and you watch my videos every week, you might consider supporting me. And if you like my videos, don't forget that patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutorials every month. The third thing you should never do with a thread burner is to use it on natural fibers like cotton and hemp and wool. So here I have just a scrap of cotton fabric and I'll pull a thread off. I didn't actually have any 100% cotton thread because most of our thread is polyester. So watch what happens here. I have to kind of go up and down. Can you see what it's doing? It's burning it. Now, it did come apart, but I don't know how well you can see. They are not melted. They are not cleanly cut. They are burnt and frayed. So it's not going to work well for cotton. The same goes for wool. Here's just a scrap of some felted wool. And I'm just going to pull out a thread. And it's smoking and burning and turning black. And uh, yeah, it's not melting. It's not a clean edge. Whew, it's getting smoky in here. Uh, it's just a black and burnt edge. There's like bits of ash on my finger. Actually, this is a common way of telling what your fibers are. If you try to burn them or melt them and they don't, then you probably have a natural fiber rather than a synthetic. One kind of in-between fiber is silk. It will work on silk. Silk is a natural material, but it's a little bit different than cotton or wool. And this actually will work on silk thread pretty nicely. And it, it does burn through it rather than melt through it, but you do get a fairly clean end. So if you're using silk thread, you can use this. Number four, real short and sweet here. Do not use a thread burner in conjunction with glue. Lots of glues are flammable and no, just don't. If you must use glue in your project, use it after you've done all of your thread burning. Now, as you're looking at this tool and thinking about its potential, you might have the bright idea of using it to burn into wood or leather or fabric. It will do all of those things, but only to a point. The wire is so fine that if you put too much pressure on it, if you're trying to draw with it, you will probably break it. It will work. Here's just a bit of uh, acrylic lining fabric. And you can see 
it is it is working did melt it but it doesn't do a great job it doesn't do a neat job and there are other tools that will do that much better I'll link to some below the sixth and final thing that you should never do with a thread burner is to start melting down your thread ends before you are finished with your project. Remember this little bead of melted thread? Well, imagine you've finished your project and you were remelting bits as you went along and then you come to a bead and maybe it has smaller holes than these and there's a big melted blob of thread at the end, you're not going to be able to get your needle through it and it's going to cause you problems. So wait until you've finished all of your beading before burning down your thread ends. Let me know which of these tips you found most helpful in the comments below. And if you want to know some really bizarre uses people have suggested for these tools, I have a link to a, the Perfect End Thread Burner on Amazon with questions that people ask like, can it be used to cauterize warts? And other things I'm not even going to mention. So if you want a little entertainment, go there and check it out.